Hey folks, Randy Newberg here with Leupold's Hunt Talk Radio from much warmer place than Bozeman, Montana. I am down in Las, Las Vegas for SHOT Show. Uh, my family calls it Lost Wages. Uh, you can figure that out quite easily. Uh, but I don't lose my wages when I'm here because I'm too busy doing all the other things related to SHOT Show. And I am over at the world headquarters of GoHunt.com with Lorenzo and Brady. And we're going to go through, because it, it, it's application season, right? Do you, do you guys have something like at my house where I have application season, tax season, oh, fishing yeah. season, and hunting season? Oh, yeah. And then it starts all over again? It's the only way to stay engaged with it all, right? Yeah. I, I can't know what's going on. It just keeps going. It does just, just continues. Going. How long? I, well, we'll get into this. Well, I don't want to ask all the questions now. But anyhow, you guys, uh, all of you listening, you've heard uh, Brady and Lorenzo have been on prior podcasts. And we try to do them in the winter because these are the guys who are up to date on everything that's going on as it relates to drawing deadlines, draw odds, new changes, quirks, strategy, so that you can go hunting every year. And I know people are like, Newberg, you always say I could go elk hunting every year or I could go deer hunting every year. I, I'm not making this stuff up, am I, guys? Not at all. <laughs> not even close. No, I think the problem Lorenzo and I always talk about there's too much. Yeah. Uh, we, do, we do talk about that all the time. Him and I are trying to convince everyone that they can do our work and him and I are just going to take an entire season and, and show everybody the opportunity that's out there. Because <laughs> <There's laughs> we, we haven't got it signed off on. Yeah, yeah, the, the staff here yeah. has not. They play. haven't agreed to take our workload on uh, at dang. the same rate. So. Well, you know, how One day. Cool, you know how people can be, right? <laughs> uh, but anyhow, before we get into the really good information of all this, we want to thank all the great companies that make this possible. Uh, Leupold, I was just over at their booth at the SHOT Show, uh, and they were doing all they could to support the, the public land, self-guided hunter, any hunter. Uh, Leupold is so great. All the groups. It's amazing when you go to SHOT Show how many <laughs> nonprofit and other causes are there asking for donation, asking yeah. for product. You guys know. You guys get it oh, yeah. all the time, too. And, and Leupold is so good about supporting so many groups and they they won't they don't talk about it they're like well that's that's just what you do if you're in this industry if yeah if conservation and shooting don't uh, prosper we don't have a business exactly which so they have I, some thought behind that that's that's yeah. a good way to think about it for yeah sure. and i see you got a gold ring over here oh, lorenzo yeah. sitting on your window i love it bolt i really do yeah. i think they i think the product themselves i mean that's what i have on my guns i yeah. i've have had them on my guns for a while i, I think yeah. they do a great job yeah and you guys have a gear shop out here with a mm -hmm. bunch of those gold rings yep. yep that they can uh so i just get to walk out and take them <laughs> <laughs> and then whoever's in charge of inventory it's has to say trying to wonder what's going yeah, on yeah where did that one go to uh Anyhow, yeah, great company makes this possible. Uh, Orion Coolers, uh, you heard that we had Damon on from Orion Coolers a couple podcasts ago, and he talked about all the backcountry hunting that is available in the East that most people don't think about. Uh, if you go to OrionCoolers.com, uh, use promo code Randy, and they're going to give you this really cool tumbler that has our Hunt Talk logo and everything on it. And you can drink, I don't care, your beer, your milk, your water, your coffee, whatever, out of this cool tumbler. And uh, they're they're just great supporters of what we do. So use promo code Randy, and you'll get that tumbler. The other is Onyx Maps. Uh, we, and it seems like all the videos we do, people are like, are you really using that Onyx Maps? I was down at the Sheep Show. I think I sold about 10 applications of, of the Hunt app. People stop me and they're like, well, how does that work? And fortunately, now that I've joined the technology world, I have it on my smartphone. So when yep. people stop so me, easy. I can hit the app and say, here, right here. You see, I've got this map saved from my last hunt in Arizona. And so, again, another great company. Use promo code Randy and you're going to get 20% off uh, any of the app products that you buy from them. Go to uh, onxmaps.com. And then... I saved the, the, the last of our great partners to be Go Hunt because I'm here with the Go Hunt guys. So it only seems Appreciate right to, to, to <laughs> kind of jump <laughs> into, into the podcast after we talk about uh, how great you guys have been to our audience. Um, anyone who 
it, when we're done with this, if, if they aren't interested in hunting every year and knowing all those little gems and stuff, I'm not sure what more I can do to help them. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I agree. <laughs> I, I, I try. I'm really trying. And when people say, Newberg, how do you get so many tags? Well, we're going to spend the next hour or so talking about how we get so many tags. And you guys have been so great that if any of you listening, if you want to join their insider service, go to gohunt.com, click on the tab that says join insider. And if you use promo code Randy, R-A-N-D-Y, they're going to give you $50 of free credit, like mad money, in this really, really cool backcountry gear shop. Mm-hmm. Am, yep. I, am I saying that Our right? Our curated gear shop. Yeah, we've basically gone out there and curated all the best gear that we think is available. You yeah. know, tried and true, whether it's a, a, the tried and true value option or the tried and true expensive option. You know, that's what we right. have in our store for all the backcountry needs. Yeah. So there you have it, folks. Promo code Randy. You're going to get all of this stuff that we're going to... We don't have a long enough period on the podcast to talk about everything. No. <laughs> I can talk for hours. And, hours <laughs> yeah. too. and then it always gets your mind going, too, because like Brady right. and I say, there's so many opportunities out there. Brady will say something, and I'm thinking in my head, well, maybe... I can fit that in somewhere over here, and then it just throws everything <laughs> off. Uh, well, that that kind of gets us into where we want to go with all of this is y- you guys know I'm not kidding when I tell people they can hunt elk every year. Yep. Because you guys understand these systems better than anyone. Yes. And uh, to me, I... And so I'm, I'm just going to jump right into one of these points of where I think people can benefit from your service. We just did a video about it. And Brady, I have no idea how long it takes you to do these application strategy articles. I really think I need to start adding them up myself because <laughs> I try to tell Chris all the time, like, hey, I got to work on app, app strategies. We can't focus on this other thing right now. And to just write them. And then I look at it later and they're 30 some pages long. And then we dive into all the graphics and the nitty di- nitty gritties of these little hidden gem information, just all right. the, you know, the biology reports, try to pull the graphics. I'm a big data guy and I just want to make graphs that look cool and also give people a lot of good information on the same, same thing to help them out. So yeah, they're, they're a beast to put together, beast to work on, but Hey, we get a lot of good feedback about them. So yeah, it's, it's funny. We, we've hired two new guys for, um, going forward now we just hired him on january 1st and it's obviously application season things are going so he's been building things and we had him say why is why is brady online at two in the morning and then again at 4 30 in the morning go, oh, no, no. you guys you guys just haven't been around here during application season he's going to be awake basically from now until the ending of all applications he's awake yeah. that's how long yeah. it takes well i i believe that because I read those articles. That's the very first thing I read when I get one of your emails that say Arizona application strategy article. Mm -hmm. I sit down and I read that just however long it takes because there's so much information in there. And as people, when, if it's someone who's new to this whole Western point game, and we were talking before we turned the mics on about how there's a lot of people who back east or whatever you just go to the sporting goods store or the the kmart walmart and you buy a ta- or a license none of these elaborate schemes uh, are in place so whether it's someone who's completely new to this someone who's been doing it a few years or someone who lives in a state where hey they got a pretty complicated scheme but they want to start hunting other states this information saves you so much time and so much air Yes. It's, and I get, um, you, one of you at one time told me our job is to make sure everybody has tags and a place to hunt. Exactly. Uh, Is that that the why of go hunt? Yeah, that's our goal. I mean, it it is, that's exactly it. I believe that hunting is the absolute best passion, hobby, lifestyle anybody could ever live. I think everybody should enjoy it at some point in their life. And we like to show people all the opportunities that are there, whether it be, you know, a, a father son guaranteed hunt or, you know, that that aspirational once in a lifetime draw tag that you're going to get in your home state. Yeah. Whatever it is, we want to show people what's available. So are you saying I my aspirations to hunt bighorn sheep in the Missouri I would breaks imagine. in Montana? That, because <laughs> I hope it is at least. So that would be mine if I lived there. So, so when I draw that, 
And I say, I drew this because of the Go Hunt Insider. I mean, am I going to get some sort of royalty or something? Sure. Okay. What are you what kind of deal? Can we work? <laughs> I'll, jo- I'll join you on the hunt. Yeah. I'll, all right. I'll, I'll hope. All right. I'll glass. Glass. You, you're, you're, you're in. I, I do hope you draw that tag. So though. if I draw, how many of you guys are coming to help? Oh, I'd definitely be there. For okay. sure. <laughs> after, going to school, after going to college there, having <laughs> some of my best friends that live in the Missouri uh, River Valley, like yeah. I, I would love to go see that yeah. for sure. Yeah, folks don't know that Lorenzo went to college at University of Montana in Missoula and Brady. Best four you, years of my life. You, you, how long were you in Montana? I was there for eleven years. Eleven years. And Lorenzo and I actually went to college at the same time, and Had somehow no idea. really you didn't know each, didn't other? Know each other. Never ran each other at all. <laughs> Had no clue. I mean, I was the geeky guy in the biology department, and yeah. Lorenzo's, you know, off the business side hunting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was hunting. I never showed up to school. <laughs> I don't know how. I graduated. Uh, so you're saying you enrolled. Your attendance might not have been that great, but I, your enrollment I was have, that? Uh, I don't even know what it's, what's it called when you graduate. What do you get? A uh, diploma, right? Yeah. Yeah, I have one of those <laughs> somewhere. I just don't know where it is, and I don't know how I got it, but I have it. Well, so I think Montana was, set you up for it, too. All my classes started at 11 a.m. in the morning, so I could hunt all morning. That's oh, how yeah. I had, too. It was yeah. always great. I went to school Tuesday through Thursday. Yep, I always had Fridays. Yeah. I did. Yep. Well, it sounds to me like I did the, the only missing part of this process, I guess, I just got to draw that 680 sheep tag in exactly. Montana. Same with all the other 6,000 people who are going for it. But. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. So there, uh, so not like that's a secret, right? If not someone goes secret, to no. your draw odds and says, uh, uh, you know, what, what are my draw odds with maximum points? Something tells me that's going to be their lowest odds. Yeah. It just gets worse and worse since they uh, <laughs> stopped allowing you to front the fees, and now it's a lot cheaper to apply in Montana. Right. And it was... Now it's worth a shot for everyone. Right. You what know, is it? Not? For a non-resident, what do you guys got to pay to be have your name in the hat? Like, I can't remember it now. Can, so I'm on uh, right. Arizona and Wyoming. For the point. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, you're I'm, big, I'm you're big, you're Wyoming. Yeah. 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 So, and believe it or not, like... The other thing too, one of the one of the great things about Go Hunt is a lot of people think that the states stay stagnant, oh. that everything stays yeah. the same year after year after yeah. year. It couldn't no. be further from the truth. Right. And that's why the the <clears throat> Uh, application articles take so long as we literally get in the mode of like, okay, we're all in this entire office in Wyoming and Arizona right now. And we're going to, we're digesting everything. We're trying to put the best application article out there, all of these things going on. And then we'll move on to the next state because everything changes. I mean, it constantly changes whether it's price or tag quotas or new units, or they cut off a hunt or whatever it is. Some form of what's in those articles is going to show the reader. Okay. Well, if this if X happened, Y is probably going to follow, so they can make the the best decision going forward. Yeah, you know, and it, it changes every single year. Yeah, I I was reading the app, the Wyoming application elk application article the other day, and uh, we did actually did a YouTube video on it, and you know most people think oh it's just fee increases that change or this or that, but every state has some little tweak, some new hunt gets added some change in season dates or yeah. something always changes. And the best way to stay on top of it and draw those tags is to find those new units that pop up. Like a few right. years ago, Idaho had some new moose units. People yeah. didn't know about them. People mm-hmm. obviously didn't apply then and people right. drew tags. Yeah. Well, last year, I think I said this on, I may not have said this cause we haven't done a podcast since then, but I drew an Arizona elk tag last year that, it had only been in existence for two years, and mm-hmm. I click on that unit and drill down, and I get to looking at your draws. I'm like, where the heck is that hunt? That October 4th, I get to start hunting with a rifle? And I looked at the draw, and I'm like, oh, that can't be. Well, guess okay. what? I drew. And that's because states are constantly changing. There's yeah. always an opportunity. Yeah. So with Wyoming... Um, what, what's the, well, by the time this drops next week, folks will have probably missed the elk deadline. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it'll be closed. January 31st is, is that elk deadline. Um, but to me there, there's the state by state strategy and then there's the overall strategy. And you've written a lot about this, uh, Brady. And I've, I speak about it a lot because I think people, they, they get so maybe focused on this state or that state that they don't realize that you can also use all of the states as a strategy or just some of the states, depending on what your budget is. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I always tell people Wyoming and Arizona, because you the draw is so early and the turnaround is pretty quick, 
I always pick one of those two so that if you don't draw, you're still in the loop for Colorado, for Nevada, for possibly exactly. New Mexico or, or some of the mm-hmm. other states. And, and the great thing to look into, too, is I wrote an article about states that you can and cannot turn your tags back in. So if you do, there for some reason, draw too many tags in the in the year, which is a great thing, <laughs> yeah, but a lot of times it doesn't fit that in doesn't your, qualify that doesn't that fit your budget or schedule. That's an important thing, though. Okay. Yeah, if you know which states you can turn it back in, back retain in. points, or, you know, pay a fee yeah, and, exactly. and lose them. And, right. You know, to that point, though, I want to back it up as an overall, overall thing, which is... Like I said before, the states are always changing, but so is hunting. And the opportunity of hunting is always changing. So, yeah, East Coasters can go to the to the store and buy their tags. I wish that was the case in the West, but it's just, it's not. Right. And some of these states like Wyoming who treat their, their uh, locals very, very well and they have tags every year, I would imagine that's not going to be forever. I hope it is. Right. I, re- I truly do hope it is that yeah. some of these states that take care of their of their residents and they already have guaranteed tags every year. I hope it stays that way, but chances are it's probably not. Yeah. And within that, that allows you to hunt other States. So from, for me being from Nevada, mm-hmm. he was born and raised in Minnesota. Brady was like it, it down here in Nevada. I had to think, okay, if I want to hunt every year, I've got to travel. So right. I was already, already in that mindset ever since I started hunting. Right. And my uncle, my uncle who lives in, in Utah, he's, started the hunt, the family hunting, basically back in Utah, uh, back in the day in Utah, there was what was called a lifetime license. Mm -hmm, And I think it cost him like six or $700. Right. And his friends thought he was insane for (laughs) buying a (laughs) lifetime license and fronting that kind of money because in, in Utah was like 25 bucks over the counter. You could go kill a deer and it was just the general tag. And that's what it was. Well, now all of his friends thinks, think he's a genius because he has a, basically a dedicated hunter tag. He can hunt all seasons long for the rest of his life. Yeah. And none of his friends did it. So hunting does change and you have to set yourself up for this overall thought of, okay, what is my hunting strategy? And yeah. for me being in Nevada, it was always, okay, Nevada is not an every year state. Right. It's Nevada not. is going to be my, my good state. That's where I'm going to burn my, my trophy as so right. to speak. Right. Yeah. Colorado has over the counter elk tags. Okay. Right. Well, Colorado is going to be my every year if it has to be, but Wyoming for us, I mean, you get, Two points in the in the general draw for for elk. You're drawing a pretty good tag, right? Good trophy quality, good hunt, wilderness backpack hunt. Okay, well that can be in every other year with Colorado being into it. Well then there's New Mexico. New Mexico has really good tags with ten to 20 percent draws. If right. you get lucky, you don't have to buy an over the counter then. Right. So that's kind of your lucky state. If it happens, it happens because there's no built in loyalty points in these right. things. So it gets you thinking in this overall like. All right, everything's going to change. Hunting out of state isn't a bad thing. It's a fun thing. Hunting right. new places is, is a fun thing. So it's kind of yeah. that overall process of exactly what you're thinking and what your goals are as far as trying to hunt every year. Yeah, a, a great thing, and some people didn't like this, but about three years ago, Wyoming changed their deer and elk deadline from March 15th to May 31st. And some people will be like, well, what's the big difference there? Well, guess what? Nevada, I always find out the Friday before Memorial Day. Exactly. So so I find out about Nevada, and that allows me to usually cross Nevada off the list or figure out what happened there. And I can then make a better plan for Wyoming deer and antelope without having to worry of, oh, what if I get multiple tags or conflicting dates or yeah my brother and i are doing the exact same thing for colorado this year we're going to do a colorado deer hunt and if we don't draw colorado we're going to turn around throw all our eggs into wyoming and if not you know we'll know the draw results by the time wyoming comes up and yeah. it's great to know everything with the draw results what the deadlines are how that all plays in your whole system and going into the application season with that strategy right mm-hmm. and, and you guys have that article out there i think you guys posted it up in december Yep, the 2018 uh, app deadlines and yeah. draw result dates, yeah. And so. I look at that, and I'm just like, I, I've got this big whiteboard of, all right, here's when I'm going to find out about that. So I, I don't lock in a certain plan on some of the later states until I already find out what happened in the yeah, earlier exactly. states. And and I'm a little bit different because I have we have to have so many tags. But even before I started the TV show, I was trying to do strategy things like that, but... Uh, the the uh, uh, file cabinets full of research information I had at that time before it all came to one focal point like you guys have was 
crazy and you know how it is you miss something because oh i forgot uh, you know i didn't write that down or the sticky note fell off the <laughs> yeah, calendar yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever and uh, so I, one thing i always want our our listeners and viewers to think about is a longer term or a bigger like you said the the the, the, the big out, big picture you're right the big big picture because if you aren't thinking that you're you, you're missing out on opportunities. You're not Agreed. gonna you're not gonna hunt as much as you probably Agreed. could. So. And everyone's getting older. I mean, oh. unfortunately. <laughs> no, well, all, right. How, all right, how old are you guys? I just turned thirty. Thirty. I'll be thirty-two in June. So okay. So we're getting older. I feel yeah. my knees when I wake up in the morning. All right. <laughs> so uh, I, normally when I'm well when I'm out with my camera crew, I'm older than both of them combined. <laughs> so when you guys start saying getting older, I'm like. All right, I got both of you by at least twenty years. So, <laughs> hey, if I'm uh, if I'm still hunting like you are in twenty years, I'll be very excited, <laughs> uh, Lorenzo. It will go really fast. Trust me. <laughs> I bet. But so Wyoming's kind of behind us, and mm -hmm. before we jump into Arizona, uh, I'd be interested to know because I see them coming online. Like this year, the one thing that is really – so in your filtering 2.0, you guys have all these options that you can filter by. And the one you added this year, well, I think you added it sometime last fall or something, but one I'm using a lot this year is the percent of public land. Yeah. It's, it's just one more filtering tool that I, I look at. Like when Wyoming, you know, you guys got every unit on the map. And every time I change a new criteria in the filtering system, units either disappear or appear. Mm -hmm. And within a minute, I have set my criteria and boom, there they are. The ones I that meet my criteria. I can kind of build my own uh, desired outcome, I guess. And then exactly. it's about how do I draw the tag. Mm -hmm. And uh, but that that public private land one is super helpful in states that have some of those. Issues. We had a lot of requests for that, and that's that was kind of bred from our our members. I mean, we talked about it in house, like looking at maps or whatever it was. And we said, why? Yeah, we have so much ask for this. Why don't we just put that in there? Right. And that's the beautiful thing about data sets is data sets paint a picture. Humans right. make numbers. Numbers can tell a story. Right. So the state issuing public private land, whatever percentage percentage it is, hunters drawing tags and killing or not killing, whatever it is, they all build a data set and the data sets can be captured and portrayed as a story. And that's exactly what it does on the site is, okay, you know, this has the best harvest success, the best chance of drawing the tag and the most amount of land to, to hunt. So yeah. I think it saves the people too a lot of times, like Wyoming antelope, for instance, like if you didn't have that pup, percent public land on there. You'd, That's a big deal. You would go there thinking, oh, I can draw this tag really easy, but right. all those tags you can draw super easy are the tags that are, you know, 80% private land. Right. And all the antelope are on there. <laughs> or even like go 90 there. plus percent. And then yeah. next thing you know, you're having to buy a trespass fee. Yeah. Right. And then that you're you like, never hey, thought you had to do. I just wasted yeah. these points and yeah. you can't hunt. Yeah. You got to wait for him to walk across <laughs> exactly. 10 feet of public land until yep. they get to the next private. Uh, well, you were talking about how member feedback is what drove some of that. Uh, the other thing I see, and, and I'm wondering if there's like four Brady's around here, because I'll click on one of the units and down at the bottom, there's all of these mem all, all, members can ask all these questions and you guys keep them in the queue because mm -hmm. I go and read every one of those questions and comments. And the guy who answers most of them is you, Brady. I'm glad right now I have also Trail help me out on these things. Okay. So he's, I'm telling you, Brady doesn't sleep though. You got people <laughs> think we're joking when we say it. I'm telling you, the guy doesn't sleep. Brews so, his own coffee and he doesn't sleep. Uh, it's a great thing. I love coffee to begin with, but I'm glad it also helps me stay up all night because <laughs> it's, it's, it's great phenomenal. this time here. But I, I glean a lot because some of the guys are very generous with their information. Oh, they're really yeah. generous on the, there, yeah. The, 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 we have great members that are willing to, yeah. to share. Yeah. And that's a beautiful thing. You know, sharing is sharing is caring as the old the old saying goes. And yeah. you know, people care for each other if they're both trying to put in the work. Yeah. Anyone who isn't clicking on a unit and going down to the bottom and reading the comments, I can't say every unit has a lot of comments, but there are some of them that have a lot of comments that answer questions that are kind of floating oh, yeah. around in my head. For where, sure. 
uh, as like Wyoming, an example, I had a couple of units on my list that had kind of sorted out when I did the filtering and I went and I clicked on one of them and I read and I thought, ah, oh, this one's not going to be very good. And the guy down there said, oh, if you draw this tag, there's this hunter management area that makes this a much better unit than you might think it is. I'm like, exactly. Oh. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. that is where my son and my uncle have a party application in oh, this yeah. perfect. <laughs> yeah, perfect. And the thing about that section for us, that comment section, that is for our, our member talk, our member to member talk. So right. um, if, if some of the listeners out there don't know, whenever they make a comment there, anybody who's commented on that unit before gets notified right. and to jump back in and to either answer the question. And if nothing's happening, we'll jump in to facilitate putting them in touch with that member or whatever we have yeah. to do. We get a lot so right now too, because of that, like a lot of guys are saying, Oh, this person asked a question last year about the unit saying they drew the tag. And now right. someone else saying, Hey, how was your hunt last year? Right. Did you, what, what kind of animals did you run into? What was yeah. Yeah. anything that, going that on? Was, and they'll come back, comment back. And it just starts a discussion. A lot of those have 30, 40, some comments on them. They're just yeah. really long. And it's like from 2014 you know, on up. It's, yeah. it's that, great to that's see That's exactly how the one I, I'm referring to. That's how it happened. Some guy jumped in there and said, hey, you you said you had the tag like last year, I think it was. And about two days later, here's a comment of another guy saying, don't don't be scared away. There's a hunter management area there that yeah. you, it, it really gives you access to a lot more of the public land than yeah. you'd think it would. And a lot of guys write they like novels down yeah. at the bottom of those specials. <laughs> really? Like, I can, I can get along stuff. with this guy. Yeah. He likes to write a lot. <laughs> Some <laughs> good stuff. Yeah. So it's stuff like that. So it, it, when you say that your members drive a lot of what you're adding, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I can see where that would happen with the amount of feedback you guys get on, on a lot of these. So we... What new states are, are, are you got Oregon? So Oregon's been live for this last year. The new, new states that we're going to do um, is California and uh, Kansas. Those are the two new ones that we're going to be doing right away. Uh -huh. I don't want to give an immediate time frame because business is business and you never know what right. hiccups are going to happen. But um, I mean, they're, they're going to be live this year and definitely not the end of the year. They're going to be live this year. Um, those are two important states for us. I think yeah. California has a ton of hunters that love to hunt out of state. Um, there's also some good blacktail opportunity there, archery blacktail in July. Yeah. People are, you know, maybe that's, that's their open time from work, family, whatever it is, and right. want to go kill a blacktail. California has some good blacktail opportunity over the counter tags. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a good deal. So as someone who's hunted Kansas four times, are you going to tell the world about all their walk-in hunting areas, Brady? <laughs> Oh yeah, we'll definitely dive, drive it in some strategy articles on that. And dang it, yeah, I'm, I know, uh, I know. I've been, <laughs> I've hunted Kansas a little bit now, and those walking areas are really good. <laughs> that's what makes that state worth it. Right. That's mm -hmm. why that state is worth it. Yeah, it's. And for those of us who hunt in the West, we're accustomed to throwing a pack on and walking in a mile. Most of the people who hunt whitetails. That's a bit of a foreign mm -hmm. Concept, idea. Yeah. yeah. And so we find some of those bigger walk-in areas or maybe even one that's long and skinny, but you got to walk the length of it. Yep. And we go set up in those and it's, mm -hmm. you pretty much have it to yourself. And I, a lot of the times I did. Yeah. A lot of the times I did. Yeah. And so I, I probably should not be telling the whole world, but they're going to find out, I guess, if they subscribe. Huh? A lot of people say I'm too giving with information sometimes on those articles. So <laughs> yeah. to, and the the, the thing is, too, is there is plenty of opportunity out there for that. I mean, yeah. it's not like there's two of them that everybody's now going to go over run. There's right. there's a lot of opportunity oh, for it. There's I can't remember. I think it's over 3 million acres yeah. of walk-in hunting it's in a Kansas. Lot. And the amount of turkeys there? Oh. Uh, every every, yep. every farmer in Kansas must feed turkeys, and I swear those turkeys are are domestic. Those things, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they will <laughs> damn near like eat out of your hand over there. It's crazy, and I, yeah. we're used to the ones over here where, I mean, it's I mean, it's like hunting a bull elk. You yeah. know, they got senses to them, and they stay away from you out there. It was hop out of the car and start feeding them almost. Yeah, if it's I cool. was a turkey hunter, I'd be in Kansas mm -hmm. every year, yeah, the number of turkeys and the amount of walk-in hunting. But So Kansas and California, uh, any other new features that are coming? Yeah, there's or? some Oh, you, you added some bigger what, features. Did you, guys, big did you do the antler list yet? Yep. Yeah, so it, actually that's a, that's a good call. Um, Within draws, which is an existing feature, but we've added to it. And what we've added is female species. Yeah. Um, 
you ram you or, ram uh, you, you ram you uh <laughs> you sheep yeah you sheep um antlerless deer and elk yeah uh yeah, cow moose antelope doe cow moose like i mean any female draw that's out there yeah. we cover now in all the states um and then we also cover bear in all the states except for utah at the moment and we will have those done um in due time for sure. So, so bear and antlerless is, is so as hard done. as it's been for me to never draw my Valvidal New Mexico bear tag. Now it's almost going to be completely impossible because you guys are telling the world about <laughs> yeah, it. Makes it the odds, yeah. Or maybe it shows people other opportunities and they start picking <laughs> up the the other units, you know. So I, I I'm starting to act like some of my viewers when I show up and hunt in their <laughs> backyard and they're like Newberg, I love the I love the idea of a public land TV show, but not in the until public you start land showing our public land. Right. So now you guys are throwing this information yeah. out there, and I'm like, that's a really good service. Actually, I had this conversation today at a lunch meeting, but the, the the beautiful thing about the about hunting and the hunting industry is there's always going to be secrets. Yeah. And that's that's awesome because oh. there's two ways to figure out the secrets. It's either going to come from your network, which is a very close, tight-knit, mm-hmm. you know, intimate thing, which is great to have. It's awesome to have close hunters around you or the hard work, feet on the ground, go figure it out for yourself. Right. Units are big. There's animals right. all over the unit. There's secrets all over the units. It's not like, you know, Anybody's Brady in our in our strategy article is saying, "Hey, hike to you know this peak at this GPS coordinate and glass to the east." There's a pocket in there, you yeah. know. None of that exists. What exists is the opportunities out there, and then it's up to you know whether it's the network you have or the hard work you're going to put in to go find the secrets. Yeah. That's the nice thing about the hunting world is it's always that's always going to exist. There's always a gem somewhere. Always. I always like that that Arizona elk tag I drew last year. When I saw my name was successful, <laughs> I was like jumping up and down, giving it the yeah, yeah, <laughs> because it was like that. When you do find that gem and it works out, it's just maybe it's because of how much time I spend doing research. It was like just getting the tag and drawing was a reward yeah oh yeah and gratification uh, yeah the, the work know, paid off yeah i didn't waste all my time sitting there for many evenings mm-hmm. on my go hunt insider sorting <laughs> yeah. and filtering all this stuff <laughs> so but to, to arizona then brady you've got your arizona application strategy article out there yep we got the elk one released and uh antelope will be up, will be up tomorrow and yeah, Arizona. So he's not sleeping tonight. No, I'm not yeah. sleeping tonight either. Yeah. I can't. <laughs> yeah, and then along comes Randy to waste an hour or two of your time <laughs> with the headphones on. He needs it. But it, there, it, so here's a change. You're talking about how things change. Arizona this year, paper applications, yep. your deadline is what, January 31st? Yep, it's earlier. Yep, it's yeah. not the February for 13th. And if you're on the portal, your deadline is February 13th. Yep. I wonder how many people aren't. Paying attention to that, and they're going to mail in a paper application with a check, and it's going to get rejected. They're going to lose their loyalty point. They're not going to get a point for this year. Yeah. That's scary. <laughs> I, is, you know, it's still surprising that people would apply on paper I know, for all I the just, errors that can happen. I still cannot believe that there's paper applications out there floating around yeah. in the world, but hey, it is what it is, right. you know, and there's opportunity because of it, so yeah. Yeah. it is what it is. So what uh, any... Uh, we want to give anyone a, a peek of what they really need to know in Arizona, or do you want them to have to read the I mean, that's article? the beauty of that application strategy article, just yeah. the amount of data that's right there in front of them. I mean, you already have draw odds, you already have filtering 2.0, and then you add an application strategy article, which a lot of times covers stuff that you know might not be in the filtering 2.0 unit profiles. Right. It's just a wealth of knowledge there. And then you can jump over, you know, the state profiles also covering stuff. You know, we're covering the drought issues in Arizona right now, which... Uh, last Huge. year at the same time, it was 60% of the state. Now, this year right now, it's 100% of the state. Is, is that moderate drought. or extreme? Severe. Extreme, yeah, drought. It's not looking like a good good picture being painted right yeah, now. Yeah, you guys in Montana have, have stolen all the water. We, we are. I, all I, of it. I, I don't know what we did to deserve it, but it's come in good doses, and it... We haven't had that brutal cold yet that kills yeah, deer and kills yeah, antelope. That's good. 
we've we've just we've had a lot of precipitation That's which good. when you're on the road like i am right now and you call home and your wife talks about how many times a snowblower ran out of gas since you left two weeks ago <laughs> that, that's, that's not, not necessarily good. A see good we don't have those issues in, in <laughs> yeah. Vegas. <I> don't. <laughs> uh, here you don't but so arizona from from a strategy standpoint i, I always put a very so uh, when i say this maybe you want to explain how why i do this brady because you do i'm sure you're in well i know in your articles you say the same thing I always apply for a really, really tough hunt as my first choice of yep. what if the planets aligned like they did in 2005 when I drew an early rifle elk tag in Unit 10. You never know. Never know. And then my second choice is always one of the late elk hunts. Mm -hmm. For antelope, again, my first choice is always uh, just a luck, uh, absolute, you know, gambler's luck rifle tag and my second choice is always an archery tag because i'm a pronghorn nut and i'll go chase them with a spear if you'll let me down yeah. there in arizona yeah. and the reason that is is arizona gives you two choices yep exactly. and that's what i really tried to break out in that app article um so try to do some more hidden gem stuff so i did a, a breakdown of elk units you could draw with five or less points and yeah. a lot of those were Two point units they had almost had you know hundred percent odds on. There are a lot of them the late archery type stuff. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not, I mean, not to give too much away on the podcast because you know we value very much our members and them giving right. you know us uh, us a chance at their at their belief in us. So right to protect them a little bit, not to get too deep into like overall like the hidden hidden gems. Right. But for me, I have uh, eight elk points this yeah. year. I'm gonna burn them like. Yeah. Don't need to say exactly what that is, but if somebody was using Go Hunt, they could see very easily, you know, what eight points get you, and it gets you some pretty good hunting, some yeah. really good hunting. Yeah, now, I mean, you, now you have a chance everywhere in Arizona too. Yeah, so you might right. as well throw your name in. No, I I read that that article that you wrote, and it's extremely helpful because I think way too many people approach Arizona that if I don't have eighteen points, I'm not going to get to go mm -hmm. hunting in Arizona. Yeah. Well, I'm living proof that that's not the case, and I'll be living proof this year. <laughs> there you go. I mean, I'm I'm just I'm gonna jump off the board with it, and it is what it is. Yeah. yeah. So it's Arizona. It, it so. Well, the, the next deadline after Wyoming is Arizona deer and elk, or, uh, elk and antelope. antelope. Later in the summer, in June, is when Arizona has their deer and sheep. We'll get to that later. But then following Arizona, what do we have? Utah, is that? You haven't jumped into Wyoming moose. Oh, yeah, um, Wyoming all, moose, goat, sheep, yep, and, all the big and bison. Yep. And a lot of people, I, I people will say, uh, I'm thinking about getting into Wyoming bison, but... Or Wyoming mountain goat, but I'm so far behind the point curve. I'm like, hold on, <laughs> hold on. There is no point system for those two. It's so great in and, Wyoming. And so it, it's those pieces that it, it helps people understand what their bigger strategy could be. Exactly. And The shot in the dark. I'm living proof of that one, drawing a yeah. desert sheep tag in New Mexico. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. We talked about the that. The second year I ever applied for different it. Different podcast. Man, it's Lorenzo, just crazy. I, I don't know how you did that. You, you had, you know. Uh, the stars aligned. That's they, why they it's did. always worth a shot. Right. The stars can align. Yeah. You know, every, like it goes to the old days when, you know, when the points very first started coming out and somebody has to draw. Right. I mean, the tag is going to somebody. There's someone, yeah. You know, and I was lucky that I drew a desert sheep tag. I mean, I still am in shock every time I look at <laughs> pictures or think about it, but I was the lucky one. Yeah. So uh, with Wyoming elk, we find out on what, February 22nd? Yep, something, something like, like that. that. Yep. And then Arizona has February 13th as the online deadline. Mm -hmm. And... uh then we find out usually sometime towards the end of March, right? If oh, and that's another reason to have a portal account. Yep. Because so you if you have the portal account, you're going to find out sooner exactly. than if you do a paper app in Arizona. Mm -hmm. Plus, exactly. you can buy the point guard thing that you were talking about. Yep, which is a huge thing. I was going to do that this year on, uh, you know, I drew a javelina tag. Didn't know I was going to go OTC Arizona yeah. for deer, and I was going to use my the point guard, but right. I ended up going. But it's just like that safety knowing. That, hey, if you can't go, you can get your points You could back. take advantage of it if you right. have to. What is it, like five bucks? It's like $5 for the insurance that you're mm -hmm. not going to be faced with, oh, lost my points and I can't go. 
Yeah, plenty of other worse it's things. Like to not spend buying insurance. On. Yeah, you know, just overall insurance. You need right. to kind of have to have it, I think. Yeah. So uh, then, after Arizona, we find out in March. But the deadline that comes, it's is February twenty eighth. The deadline for Wyoming. Yep, February twenty uh, eighth. Um, moose, goat, sheep, and and uh, bison. And it'll be interesting this year to see what happens because Wyoming yeah, had some fee increases. And it's and definitely going to make people consider some hefty fee increases, yeah. really, I, if you think about it. Yeah. I mean, the last time Wyoming, but in 2007, Wyoming increased their cost, their point cost for moose and sheep. I had seven points at the time and I bailed. If I would have known because that, of the point, because of the increase in cost. Yeah, it's like you know, I'm someday gonna draw in Montana and da da da. And I'm buying points for me and my son, and I had seven at the time. If I would have, I had no idea that so many other people were gonna bail. I'd have seventeen right now. I'm like, ooh, oh, okay. that might not have been a good idea, Randy. <laughs> but oh well. But I guess I could. I don't uh, apply for mountain goat in Wyoming because I've got such good chances in Montana to, yeah, you to really draw do. mountain goat as a resident. So, But then after that, when is Utah? I know Montana's March yeah, 15th. Yeah, Utah's right after. Utah's yeah. normally the 1st of March, okay. so it might be this year. Utah and Nevada yeah. go back to back uh, every yeah. year. Uh, Utah and Nevada or Utah and Montana? Well, Utah Mon- Utah, Montana. Yeah, yeah Utah yeah. comes out, and then Nevada's oh, right. up right after that. Yeah. That's, yeah as I know, a, down here release. in our world, it's kind of a... That's nice because you just go from one right to the other and you know exactly what's going on. Right. And so with Utah, there, there's some interesting things in how Utah does it. I, I think a lot of people just kind of throw their hands up in the air with Utah also because they think it's like Arizona. You got to have 20 points. Well, I drew elk in Utah with four points. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's phenomenal oh yeah i drew it's well, awesome and, and what it was is i i was the first alternate and someone turned the tag back in and i came home from work and there's a message on my phone this is utah division of wildlife resources you are, are the first alternate a tag was turned back in would you like it i at first i'm like is this a prank or what's yeah. the deal here i call them I'm like are you kidding me yeah, I just need your credit card by this day. Here, let me let me get it to yeah. you. So four points, archery elk yep. in Utah. And, you know, you don't necessarily have to, because it's a bonus point system. And, exactly. And half the tags go into the bonus point pool, and the other half are awarded to the person or persons with the most mm-hmm. points. But still, half of the tags are available to... There's also a the, random draw aspect in utah as well so there is the random chance of a zero point like last year i was just talking to a guy about it uh the other day last year there was a guy with zero points hunted the henry mountains for deer really zero points (laughs) 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 that's just crazy that's right up there with you drawing that desert sheep tag exactly but yeah there's um there is a random aspect to utah as well so utah is another state that's worth it uh, yeah. the, you know, the elk, not everybody's going to be lucky enough to draw it at four points, but right. I mean, it's, it's worth building some elk points in Utah for sure. It, it yeah. really is. Yeah. Um, but deer, the general deer seasons out there, they, mm-hmm. that's can be, those can be some pretty good hunts. Right. And those are tags that are fairly easy to acquire. Yeah. And two years after I drew that archery elk tag with six points, I drew the Oak Creek Fillmore that's archery right. mule yep. deer tag. <laughs> that's, that's a good tag yeah. too like a really good tag and, uh, that's not a general tag yeah so i'm like wow i how am i doing this in utah I, mm-hmm. <laughs> but all of it plays into that bigger strategy yeah. because i have some states that i i know my odds are slim so you know what what the heck swing for the fences yeah and then i have some states where my odds are better and i just i know i want to get a tag or i gotta yeah. get a tag so it it the more states you apply for, and I understand that everyone has the budget or the of either time or money to apply for every state, but the more you can build into your budget, the more options you give yourself. And that's where the strategy comes in. It's just, you know, the overall budget is obviously going right. to run, you know, run what your strategy is. But I mean, you, on a budget, you can apply for a lot of different states, Yeah, a lot of different states. 
And now Utah also opened the doors for the uh, general season elk, too. How you can hunt all three seasons. Yeah. Right, yeah. Archery, muzzleloader, and uh, rifle. Yeah, so there's always that as a fallback for guys looking to fill in their, you know, whole picture of what they want to hunt this year, didn't draw tags, and yeah. just want to, you know, grind out in the general hunt. But Yeah, my son has a whole pot full of deer points there, and... I'm looking at those muzzleloader, those new... And now you can have a scope you, on top of it? Are you going to put that in the strategy article? Uh, I mean, the, the late scope, muzzleloader ones? The scope thing's yeah. a big game yeah. changer. That so, is yeah. a big game changer. Yeah. I mean, the, you're the, basically hunting with a rifle. Right. Right. You are now, yeah. The, that plus then the, that later muzzleloader deer hunts on some of those units. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I With his points... Oh, he could draw one of those later he, ones. He yeah. might be uh, in the running for one of those. And we've never been big muzzleloader people, but... If the season dates work and it's another option to go out and chase mule deer in November, all for it. What's not to like about that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and really, like I said, I mean, it is basically a rifle nowadays. Yeah. The consistency in ballistics from muzzle loaders now with a variable scope on top, I mean, that's dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. And he's sitting on, well, I'm in the penalty box, as they call it, on, on elk because I drew in 2014, yeah. but he is sitting on. Uh, 16 elk points um really? so yeah so looking at all the possibilities he's got the, quite, he's got he's, a few he's got a lot yeah and uh, just you know and that again that gets into strategy of well does he want to try for the san juan you know which is mm -hmm. well good luck with that even if you're the highest point holder in, still in utah there's still like 30 other high point holders with yeah. you who are all trying for the exactly. same one yep. or does he try for something that's like that arizona article you did that said if you know if you have two to four points here's where you should be looking if you have five to try to show people points, the options there's yeah always places for them to fit yeah, so I get all excited talking about this I know, stuff. I know, I I'm a number. <laughs> and I guy. love to hear other people's strategies to see. Like, yeah. I, I always pick up something new from somebody else's strategy. Yeah. That helps my overall. So we got then, so then it goes to Utah. And we don't find out about Utah till mid May, usually, right? Yeah. Mm -mm. That, that's a little bit longer of a delay there, but it is, is what it is. And then Montana uh is march 15th for non-residents and, yep. and it's funny i am so poorly versed in how the non-resident system works in montana because i'm a resident yeah and uh people will call me like well oh, what, what's the difference between how bonus points and preference points oh, work man, in yeah. montana and all i can figure is that someone in helena just said Let's hire a consultant to see how confusing we can make this it draw is, system. It is probably, in my opinion, it's the most confusing state. Yeah. It yeah. Is, it's got some nuances to it, for yeah. sure. And I think in Montana, if you apply uh, for deer and elk, the results come out like April 15th or something yep, like exactly. that. There's about a one-month mm -hmm. turnaround there. And then not... When does New Mexico fall into that? Because some goes normally the middle of March, right? March twenty so, first ish, yeah. right? So right, I'm always waiting to s keeping my fingers crossed that I find out about Arizona before I do New Mexico, yep. because New Mexico doesn't have this, you know, point guard kind of. Mm -hmm. bailout plan if, yeah. if you end up with a an extra tag and, and trust me and there's I no point system right so i mean it's just oh, luck of the draw yeah, yeah good good point uh so the, again back to strategy if this is someone who's just starting this process new mexico is a great state 65 dollar refundable yeah you know, hunting license so you click the box if i don't draw please refund my my license. It's cheaper hunting New Mexico than it is to go to Idaho, Idaho to buy the hunting license. Right, and yeah. it's non-refundable. Yeah. And it's... New Mexico, because of the no points, there is some really good hunts out there <laughs> with with good draws, yeah. you know, in yeah. one in five, one in four type chance, something like that, you know. Yeah. And those are some really good hunts that have that. Other hunts have, you know, if you just want an opportunity hunt, there's really good draws, yeah. you know, better than 50%. Yep. Yeah, there's a guy out on our Hunt Talk website. He... uh Thought, well, I'll jump in this New Mexico game and see it happens. He applied for uh, a wilderness unit in mm -hmm. the Gila. First year, he drew. Oh. He'd never been on an elk wow. hunt in his life. He went down there and on the third day shot a really nice bull. <laughs> <laughs> How cool I is that? I bet, though, when he first drew that, he was wishing he was hunting Colorado or Idaho over the counter, you know, three, right. four years before that. So he had a 
good knowledge of, of you know elk. how elk and uh, right. of how to hunt them and all that stuff you know yeah i'm and sure he knew how to hunt them but <clears throat> it's always nice to keep the, the skills fresh from when you do come up with a tag like that yeah and and those it's the those situations like jeff said are always that reminder of guess what you just never know <laughs> <laughs> yep but so then after new mexico we Go, have, colorado oh yeah colorado yeah. i can we just skip Colorado deer? Because I found something the other day that I don't really want to talk about until after the the, the dry deadline. Okay. <laughs> There's those hidden gems. <laughs> There's those hidden gems. Well, if you want to talk about hidden gems, you need to read Brady's hunt about his Colorado deer hunt. It was on our podcast yep. Yep. a year yep. ago. That was a hidden gem. Oh, it was such a hidden gem. A lot of people just overlook those type Colorado of Colorado in general is a hidden gym. Yeah. That place is insane. Uh, every guy, I mean, this, this year even, I went back to Colorado, and every guy we talked to was an elk hunter, and they're like, we haven't seen deer here in so long. And I'm like, well, I just saw a big herd of mule deer a little bit ago. They're all hunting cow elk. Mm-hmm. Or they're just hunting elk in general. And it's like, those guys are just know that as an elk state. I'll, I'll give you a hidden gym about Colorado for just in a general sense. But when you're out there on a third, second, third, fourth season deer hunt, yeah, the locals love elk. Right. They don't care oh, much for, sure. for mule deer. Yeah. And elk are, I mean, they are the, the oh, you gotta they're love awesome them. animals. Yeah. You got to love them. Yeah. And killing a big bull, you know, shooting a cow elk, that's awesome. It's fun to hunt big animals like that. But they'll give up deer right away <laughs> if you cross them on a path. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times we've been hunting in Colorado that, you know, you go up, where are you from? Oh, I'm from, you know, such and such here in Colorado. You seen any elk? No, but man, I saw a good buck back here though. Like he was just, you know, just right back there on this ridge. It was a yeah. good buck. Like we right at his ears, you know. Okay, I'll go check yeah. it out. <laughs> you know? They'll give him up right away. Uh, it's great. So that buck you shot, Brady, was that is that your biggest buck? Today? That's the biggest buck to date. Yep. Yeah, and it, Colorado is just. Is it oh. safe to say it took less than two points for that unit? It's safe to say that. Yep. <laughs> How many <laughs> points? I, I won't say exactly, but it's safe to say it's it's, it's less, less than two. Than, yeah, that is so It is cool. less than I, two. And I've got friends who are residents of Colorado. And I'm I'm always, hey, you want to come with you? Let's hunt together. And I never want to invite myself on their deer hunts because these guys are doing the Brady trick. They have some really, really good units figured out. That yeah. They're hunting every year or every other year. It takes zero points or mm-hmm. one point. And they're letting the elk hunters go out and do their thing, <clears throat> but yep. they're they're finding wow. super There's nice so many deer. good strategies revolving in Colorado. <clears throat> and the beauty of that is, and I talk about it with these Colorado over the counter elk tags, is if you find a place you can hunt every year, every other year, every every third year, you'll get to know that place pretty well. Yeah, you'll get to know it almost as good as the locals. Exactly. And I, you give me a place that I can hunt every year, and I really like that. Or every other year, because I feel my chances of shooting something there are better than the place I'm going to draw every ten years. Couldn't agree more. And so, those are things that fall into my my strategy. Do you guys have? I don't see them. You guys must keep them hidden. I have got three great big whiteboards at my place that have all this strategy lined out. It's calendars, it's deadlines, it's sticky notes. It's and on one column, it's elk. And it says four to six. I need four to six elk hunts. Deer, two to four. I need two to four deer tags. And then it's by state. And as I make my application, I cross them off and erase it. And and then my spreadsheets, accountants have a problem with spreadsheets (laughs) to start with. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my goodness. Because... I, what I'm doing is I'm going in and searching all this stuff in Go Hunt, and these things are popping up. I'm put that in my spreadsheet, put that in my spreadsheet, and then I have them all all my search results in my spreadsheet. So once the dominoes start falling with each state, I'm pulling that spreadsheet up, mm-hmm. and then I all right, here are the five units I really got to research in what you know Colorado, let's yeah. say, and uh, boy, I hope I draw that tag in Colorado this year. If I do, yeah, oh, it'll, pro- it'll probably be a bad <laughs> See, year. See, we and- do all of that, but we're online. 
so we don't do the whiteboard. So oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah these we two use are, technology. So for those of you who can't see the look I just got <laughs> when I was talking about whiteboards, <laughs> Lorenzo's on my right, Brady's on my left, and they looked across to each other like whiteboards, huh? <laughs> <laughs> the only thing We're, we have whiteboards yeah. for in this office is for making bets with each other, yeah. so we don't forget <laughs> the bet. Yep. So everybody in the office knows. This bet is made, and it's got to be paid off with whoever wins. <laughs> it is very hard to find a pen in this office. It is. There's not very many pens floating around. Because everything's done everything's digitally. Done digitally. Computer, yep. All right. So I'm an old Luddite, so <laughs> we'll, we'll go with that. So we got through Colorado, and to, look, Colorado, moose, goat, and sheep. We, we, I, I blew right into deer and elk. That's a bit of a different system there. Yep, it definitely is. Uh, Colorado, Paper only. Yeah, and Colorado's a, a preference point system, a true preference point system for deer, elk, and antelope, but it's got kind of this weighted, got to have three, what do they call the first three points? Yeah, the weighted points. Yeah, weighted, the weighted points. points before you can even So you have, even consider the, how they reference it is three plus whatever you have on top of that. So if you, yeah. have, you know, I got three plus four. So you got four points once you hit the weighted three points. Yeah. Hey, I'm sure the listeners are like, what the heck? So they're going to just have to subscribe to the strategy yeah, break it down. article yep. to, to figure that but it's one out. Paper, that one's paper application only, which yeah. is changing. Uh, Who's this year? This year it's changing. Yep. So which now is going to be a big game changer that for is draws. A big, okay. It's so going to make a lot easier. That is the big game changer of Colorado yeah. this year is right. that now it is, it's electronic. Yeah, and you don't have to front the money. I know on deer and elk you don't have to front the money. Do you, are you going to have to front the money on the other three, do you know? I can't recall off the top of my head. Okay. Yeah. So I think just not having to front the money for deer and elk and antelope is going to be a big game changer yeah. in odds. That's why I want to burn my points right now and jump back in next year and start. so I'll only be one point behind because that's a good, that's a good I, thought. I, I do think that Colorado is going to see a significant change in draw odds once they say, oh, just send us the $10 application. They're fee. definitely going to see a, an increase in, in draws for the, the trophy species. The it's like when, I, goat. when I was breaking down the Montana stuff the other year, it was significantly high percentage of people were applying in Montana for you know the break sheep compared to what it was when you had to front the money. Like right. It yeah. blows your odds out of the water. Yeah, it's mean, so easy. Anyone... Your right. cousin, friend, they all start applying. Yeah, like, non-residents at that time had to front, what, $750? Yep, now and it's that, 70 now, bucks. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. Well, you got a lot more people who are willing to throw their $70 Absolutely. in the hat than to front mm -hmm. the $750 plus have to cough up the 70 for the point. Yep. yep. Yeah. Dang, these states. What, what? And they're always going to change. It's always going to change. My head. <laughs> and that's what, that's uh, what, you know. So after Colorado is Nevada, right? Yep. <laughs> my Nevada. favorite my favorite state to be a non-resident and it's it's, so it's, good to you. it's it's a toss up between Arizona and Nevada and i think the reason i'm so partial to to those states is Arizona i get a lot of value out of the license by going and do over the counter mm -hmm. deer which is archery i go leftover javelina yesterday our camera crew they're down there right now they shot three javelina really <laughs> yeah <laughs> This weekend they shot. That's awesome. They shot three javelina with their bows, and so I get there Thursday. I told them, I said, "You guys go buy deer tags. Start, start chasing deer. <laughs> yeah. Get a couple deer on the ground before yeah. I get there." I saw a bunch of people saying the rut is fully on. Really, down there Ooh. in Arizona, I heard Ooh. it's like on, on. Yeah, as of yesterday. And, and so I get a lot of value out of my Arizona license because I go down there quail hunting, dove hunting. There's all these other things that you can do. Nevada is just. For whatever reason, Nevada treats me well. It must be all that tuition I paid when I went to college here. Maybe here's, that's here's, it. here's the gym. It's not necessarily a gym, but here is somewhat of the takeaway that not a lot of people know about because it's not marketed. But Nevada, yeah, only 10% of the tags go to non-residents. Yeah. But there's a lot of hunt choices that don't have a ton of applications put in on them. And Nevada's application process is a compounding draw odd. Yep. And what I mean by that is the the application as a whole has choice one through five. Right. That applicate that application gets pulled once. Yep. So you have the compounding odds of your for, first through fifth choice on that one time being pulled out of the bucket. Right. So your draw odds, if you choose your hunts properly, the compounding odds could go from 
you know, what shows, if we were showing first choice only, which is what's been done in the past in the industry, as far as draw outs go, if I'm showing first choice only for Nevada, it could be as low as two, five, six, seven percent. Well, compounding odds brings that to 30 or 40% sometimes if you structure it correctly. It's a good chance for an out of state person to draw a tag. Really good chance. And people say, Newberg, how do you draw so many deer tags in Nevada? Well, First choice is always a hard-to-draw rifle tag, usually in November. Mm -hmm. Second choice, uh, not quite as hard to draw. Third choice, usually a harder-to-draw archery tag. Fourth choice, not that, not still hard, but not super hard to draw archery tag. Last choice, archery tag. Archery tag. Did they have any leftovers last year? Exactly. Go hunt more. I this year in 2017, I drew zero points. And people, uh, they see That's my name. That's a common occurrence in Nevada. Yeah. They Zero s- point draws. Yeah. They see my name on the list. They're like, what the heck's going on? <laughs> well, don't put all five choices as, you know. Late season rifle hunts. <clears throat> right. Uh, <laughs> There's going to be a lot of people who apply for those, obviously. I mean, those, right. yeah, those are the sure. best tags in, in Nevada. Pre-rut, it's great tags. Yeah. I but would. there's a lot of opportunity. I mean, we have some amazing mountain ranges. Oh, yeah. Our, our valleys go from zero to feels like you're walking to heaven sometimes when you're getting on top of these mountains in Nevada. But yeah. and there are some really good places, high country places, mountain places that you can get tags for fairly easily. And the quality of the experience, if you draw in Nevada, you are going to have a quality hunt. I don't care what species it I is. I agree. Oh, yeah. Fully agree. Uh, I mean, uh, I love the way Nevada governs their tag quota. Yeah. It's very nice. Tons of public land. It's not going to be overrun with people. It's, they do a remarkable job. Nevada and Arizona do a remarkable job of balancing uh, age class with still uh, more opportunity than I would have expected for, yeah. for all species. And I'm, I, I hope I get to go pronghorn hunting again here this year. I, I I'm in time out on that. Oh, you're in I the penalty box. Two years ago, yeah. Okay, I I uh, drew the Sheldon in 2007, and at the time it was seven seven years in the penalty box. I think. Yeah, Something it's like that. same. Is that what it still is now, or was yeah, it we, five? We, dro- we dropped down. Yeah, we dropped down to five as of this or last year. Yep, last, yeah. year okay. last year. Okay, so I've I don't have that many points, but I've driven around all over in Nevada in every unit in Nevada. I have seen bucks that are pushing or over 80 inches. If you draw a pronghorn tag in Nevada and you put your time in, you are going to find a buck in the high 70s or possibly like the one we found for Mike last year, 84 something or 80, um, just under 84 is a growth score. Couldn't agree more. It's uh, Nevada has some amazing antelope. Those archery odds. That's the hidden gem of Nevada is the antelope. Right. I mean, we have some damn big antelope out here. Yeah. And so we find out Nevada, for all species, everything, right? Yep. Uh, it's all um, species all at yep. once. All Usually comes out all like at once. late May, draw late results. May, yeah. It's just their, bef- their posting is before Memorial Day mm-hmm. is what they say. Right, yep. yeah. And so you find so out. So it'll, well, it'll change what day specifically, but it's before Memorial. Yeah, the last many years, it's been the Friday before Memorial yep. Day. Yep. Yep. And I know that because I'm usually sitting in Petersburg, Alaska, just getting in from a spring bear hunt. And I it's run not to a bad the, there's a little hotel too. called the Scandia Inn, and they've got Wi-Fi. Oh. <laughs> and so I'm like, no, we'll go to dinner in a minute. Just wait. <laughs> I'm telling the crew. <laughs> I got to find out. But so let's see. Nevada, then we have what? We have Montana, a, moose, goat, and sheep. Yep, and Idaho, Idaho moose, moose, goat, and sheep. They're a day apart. Mm-hmm. Dang, I got to figure out what I'm going to do in Idaho because they had such a rough winter kill on their deer a few years ago. What? Not this winter, year before. You know, you went and hunted there. This yeah, year, it was brutal this last year. I mean, that winter. It was affected, for oh, sure. Yeah. Talked to a lot of people. They said it wasn't affected, but actually being in those units, like, you could see it. Yeah. I mean, there's not, I didn't see a buck yeah. in seven days. So. so I suspect that when people read your Idaho article, there's a chance you'll try to exp- open people's eyes this year. I mean, it's. You'll expand on that. Because I, when it's, when there's winter kill years like that, so I'm sitting on maximum points in Wyoming for deer. And I'm kind of hemming and hawing. I've waited all this time for it to fit my calendar. Well, now when it fits my calendar, they're coming off a really tough winter in 16, 17. Yes. So the strategy tells me maybe I should just sit on it for another three or four yeah. years and make the most of it and say, 
versus get impatient. Yep. And uh, yeah. it's the same with Idaho, because in Idaho, you can apply for moose, or you can apply for goat, or you can apply for sheep, or you can apply for the other three of elk, yep. deer, and antelope. So when deer is down, I would say Idaho's great over-the-counter general species when it's good is is mule deer. Mm-hmm. And so in those years, like this year, I'm probably going to shift over to moose and say, mm, yep. you know, tough. Yeah. I'm going to give them a few years to rebound and maybe the draw odds will be better in Idaho for these limited entry permits if more people do that. But if I draw, I want to have a, yeah. a, a, a decent experience. Exactly. So, and then Montana moose, goat, and sheep is May 1st. Maybe Find out in late June or mid-June, like 24. 3rd, 24th, and then, let's see, Wyoming elk, or Wyoming deer and antelope. I, I know I'm missing yeah, something. When, when is Kansas? Oregon. Oregon, Oregon yeah. Kansas, Kansas is in there, too. Yeah, when's Oregon? Oregon's usually May 15th is a app deadline, June 15th results. Okay. My son just moved to Oregon, so we got to get this Oregon stuff straightened out. I used to apply in Oregon, and then they cranked up the non-resident mm-hmm. tag fee and lowered the percent of tags to non-residents in the same year. And yeah. like, yeah. I think 2008 is when they did it, so I bailed. But now that Matthew lives there, I got to start figuring out, huh, there's got to be some place I can go. And There's some good opportunity and, there. Yeah. All the Oregon guys, when I was up at the sheep show in Reno uh, last week, we're talking about their bear hunting in Oregon. Oh yeah, everyone talks about bears. And... Is, are the I don't I don't know much about it. Bear hunting in Oregon is it draw? Is it over the counter? Is it a bit of everything? I honestly never looked myself, but I know there's big bears. Yeah. I mean, the... <laughs> so I I might be over there in uh, May or mm-hmm. sometime. Yeah, chasing a, a spring bear. So, and when's Kansas? Kansas, Kansas non-resident deer, uh, end of April. End of April, okay. Yeah, and you usually find out pretty early in Kansas. Mm-hmm. That's, yep. So, what else have we missed? Any other? Yeah, then it jumps into, yeah, Wyoming resident elk, Wyoming deer, antelope. Yeah. And then super late, you have my favorite, the Arizona oh, deer yeah. results. <laughs> you yeah. get a... 30 days to figure out if you have a deer tag or not if it's yeah, archery right. yeah arizona deer and and uh, uh limited entry deer yeah and limited bighorn sheep deer. which i'm pretty sure they're going to take my 20 bighorn sheep tag their desert sheep points this year yeah yeah i hope so we'll be on that one too yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'll join you uh, yeah wouldn't that be nice but uh, i kind of like that it's such a quick turnaround to the hunt because i apply archery on the limited entry in arizona obviously because yeah. Yeah. You know, in a well, lot of instances, it's better. Yeah. Better way chances. Better but odds. Yeah. It's kinda, you, I kind of like that it's, if you do have the tag, you know you're going hunting right away. Right. Start yeah. scouting now. And where you guys live here in Vegas, you can it's be close. there pretty. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can be, your trip is a lot closer than mine from, way closer from Montana. <laughs> Even to the east side of the state, we can be there. Yeah. Be so there quick. you guys now have a lot of over the counter and other general stuff in there so we get all this done and the average person still they're new to the game maybe Mm -hmm. they don't have any points or they just you know what wasn't their year they didn't draw now you've got these over the counter and these general kind of things that are still there and that's where i get my on my soapbox and tell people you can still go hunting yeah you can still hunt elk and they're like yeah right sure yeah, uh, Oregon has over-the-counter elk, yep, right? It does. It does. I, I always forget about that because mm-hmm. I don't hunt it. But I, I always send people to Idaho or Colorado for over-the-counter elk. And Montana usually has some leftovers, yep. um, either leftover elk or leftover elk deer combos. So if you get all these results by June 15th and you still don't have the tag, is that an actual strategy article that you do? Uh, around the, I do release articles every time there's leftover permits, and we'll break down where the units, how many units are available, how many tags they give out in each one. So yeah, it's we a great time to keep on overall opportunity too. Yep, we do opportunity articles. Yep, but yeah, 
it's really good to stay on top of it because once you know release the draw results when they're coming out, and then knowing right afterwards when their leftovers are coming out too, because like, oh, no, right. like Nevada has the you know the yeah. the second draw, and you know Idaho does too. I, and, oh, that Idaho second draw, I'm always in on yeah. that. Man. Yeah, I'm, oh yeah, I'm on that like a rat on a Cheeto because <laughs> I've already bought a non-resident license to yeah. apply f in exactly. the earlier draw. You know, so why not? When there's leftovers for five Why bucks, not? what is it? Five bucks, ten bucks? Uh, yeah, you, you, you're so. asleep at the switch if you aren't in the Idaho second draw. Agreed. And and pretty much the same with Nevada, yep. unless you say, well, I'm not willing to go archery deer hunting because that's the majority of the leftover yeah. deer tag. Yeah, last year it was all archery deer. Yeah. I, Every once in a while, though, there's something yeah. weird in the Nevada I, leftover. I drew in the, Every le once in in the leftover archery draw. I drew the big seven archery deer one year Ooh, really yeah i could not believe it it's like really unit 70 through what 75 it yeah. is or whatever Good. that's left over there were like 20 of them left over i'm like well i'll, I'll never drop it what the heck i'll throw it in there good True. hunting too yep. yeah if i wouldn't have screwed that up really I, good hunting. I got a lot of stories about shooting over the back of mule deer i don't know <laughs> what the deal is I, we gotta fix that i must get so excited when i see a mule deer or something every mule deer i've ever missed i've missed high and like just right over the back <sighs> That's oh, well. heartbreaking. Oh, well. And then you got other guys who seem like they could, they got ice in their veins or something. It's, oh, well, we don't need to get into that discussion. <laughs> uh, I'll stick to something I'm decent at, researching uh, uh, draw results and other activity. So so we, uh, we did a, a YouTube video recently about how to use your filter system. What do you guys call it? Filtering? Filtering 2.0. 2.0. And I just wanted people to understand how much time you can save by just searching their criteria. Okay, I want harvest percent of more than this or, you know, whatever parameter you want. I want trophy potential. Doesn't mean you're guaranteed a 280-inch bull, but they're known to live there. Mm -hmm. I want draw odds of at least 10% or whatever. And so I was showing people how that filtering system works and... And not only does it save a ton of time, it just gives me the comfort that no gems are falling through mm -hmm. the yep. the crack. Because what I consider a gem in Wyoming right now with zero elk points is different than what would be considered a quote unquote gem if I had six elk points. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. I have two elk points in Wyoming and I know what my gem is if I yeah. want to draw it this year. I know exactly what I'm going to do. Yeah. But it and would be very different if I had, you know, 10 plus. Be very different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So my son is burning. Oh, boy. I hope that this, that, well, I hope the fee increase doesn't cause everybody to jump in jump and in try to year, burn yeah. and say. On the trophy stuff on yeah, the, or, or the high end on stuff. On the elk or they say, you know what, I'm I'm burning them this year and I, I'm off and, and never to be seen again because. My uncle Larry and my son, they, they should draw that right tag. That, that one I was telling you about yeah. those comments at the bottom about that hunter management yeah. area. Oh, man. <sighs> Last year, they, they their, their weighted average, their, my uncle almost has max point. They were a point above what was needed last year wow. as a combined application. They just so, didn't know about that specific. Well, thing. last year it just didn't fit the calendar. Yeah. So yeah. I, my son was wrapping up school and he didn't know what his job situation was going to be. So we just yeah. kind of bought him another point. But so, yeah, I would love to, I'd love to help them pack big elk out of the Wyoming hills. But it's always fun. Yeah. So uh, what other things are, are coming along that you think people need to be paying attention to any, anything that's going to pop up in an application strategy article where we can kind of, roll the cover back enough where they say, all right, that's enough. I, I can't take any more. <laughs> well, if we give it to them now, then they won't sign up. Well, you know? well that, that's true. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's just the overall theme that things constantly change. And if you want to hunt every year, you've got to know the opportunities out there. You've got to. Yeah. And it's that simple. I mean, I hate to make it sound that simple because hunting is extremely complex. It's one of the most complex things out there, but... If you want to hunt every year, it really is that simple. You've got to have an overall strategy. You got to be able to play each state off each other, and then at the end of the day, you have to know where the over the counter over the counter opportunities lie. Yeah. So draw odds. I mean, why? Oh, 
I'm sitting on a chair. Sorry, folks, if you just heard a squeak. I'm <laughs> sitting on a leather chair. Uh, Wyoming has pretty easy to understand draw odds. Yep. Yeah. You know, it's by point pool. Mm-hmm. Then you start getting complicated. You get Arizona. Okay. You get to, there's first pass, second pass. There's first choice, second choice. Mm-hmm. There's some units where there's a 10% non-resident cap, and there's some hunts that aren't a 10% non-resident cap. Mm-hmm. You have a loyalty point if you've been there for more than applied for that species for more than five years. You got a permanent hunter ed point. You got all of those kind of things that get into these draw odds. And then you got the mother of them all, Nevada, where you got five choices where they square. Do, no, do you, do you guys? Yeah, yeah square, you square. guys square. And no, no, no preference. It's all bonus. All bonus points. So no one is preferred over the next guy. It right. just all comes down to. So. Uh, I hear, you know, I, I subscribe to every research service out there because I want to, and every tag application advisor thing, because I want to see what they're saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, just, you know, what are they thinking? But they all say, oh, they're like a big disclaimer. These are first choice. These are simple odds that are first choice tags divided or first choice applicants divided by first choice tag. Mm -hmm. That does me no good. No, it literally means nothing. uh, Yeah. Don't even waste the ink to print that. I agree. (laughs) I agree. That drove us crazy from day one. Yeah. And And that's why it took us a while to get our draw odds up is we have a full blown proprietary system. Right. With data scientists on board who help us parse this data and structure it such that it is the best, most reliable draws out there. Yeah. And quite honestly, the other reason I subscribe and look at some of those other services, sometimes they have their draw odds so screwed up. Yeah. I, I know that it might discourage some yep. people from certain units and that causes me to say, I'm going to apply there. Mm-hmm. Or they're so screwed up the other way that it makes it look like good draws. I'm like, you know what? People are going to see that they think that's a good draw odd. And yes, it is a good unit, but that's going to screw up the odds for everyone. I, I'm not even applying there. Mm-hmm. So accuracy is invaluable when it comes to draw odds. And I was, when you guys came out with your draw odd system, I still remember. I'm like, if you guys can do this, you've <laughs> built the mouse trap that everyone's been looking for. And you did it. I, I don't yeah. know how you did it, <laughs> I, but I'm sure it wasn't easy. It was not easy. And just like, you know, we don't want to give up the hidden gems. I also don't want to talk about the cost. In <laughs> yeah. We'll leave that. I want to forget that stuff. I want to forget that. Uh, so are you a draw odds kind of guy, Brady? Are you really into the odds and the numbers? Or are you just, you know, there's how many points I got. I'm going. I go. I mean, I don't want to buy points. I want to buy a hunt in a sense. I want to go hunting more. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't, like I said, I don't care to have four or five points. I would rather just go hunting every year, learn more about the animals and do that. I'm the exact same way yeah. other than my home state. Yep. Yeah. Western states. Yeah. Uh, exactly. My home state is uh, a lot of the time, like elk even, mm-hmm. I only fill out three choices. Okay. And, and the right. reason why is I was hunting elk over the counter in Colorado last year. Right. I was hunting elk in New Mexico last year. Right. Uh, you know, there's opportunity out there to to feed my elk needs. Right. Um, you know, I was on an over-the-counter elk hunt in Colorado. Hiked, you know, it's not going to be easy. Mm-hmm. Over-the-counter isn't going to be easy, but I like the experience. I like the overall experience. Right. Backpack hunting is my favorite. I get to do it every year if, if I choose to in, in Colorado. I chased a, what a lot of people would call, a great bull anywhere. I mean, it was a solid six point, well into the three thirty, maybe even three forty range. Wow, that's over the counter great. Bull. And that's not going to be that's not going to be a normal Norm. thing. Right. Yeah. But hey, you know, I got to chase him for a couple of days in Colorado. My buddy shot Brandon, who also you know does our research, oversees the entire research platform of Gohan. Mm-hmm. He shot a good buck. We had a chance at a lot of other good bucks. It was a what is that? A two point unit yep. for archery. Yep. Two point unit Very for easy. archery. He got wow. the tag. I picked up an over the counter archery elk tag to go with him. Yeah. So my the bull that we found was just kind of. You know, fell into our lap. It was lucky. <laughs> I just, I said, I'm going to pick one up just in case we come across mm-hmm. one down on the willows on the hike in. Well, little did we know we were going to find one at the, literally the highest peak and it yeah. was a giant bull, but you know, it just, just is what happened. So huh. I like the experience. I like to go hunting. 
I have I don't overthink my points in other states. Yeah. I want to go hunting. Like this year, Arizona. You know, I have eight points. It's right. plenty for me. Right. I want to yeah. go hunting because I was I've been over the counter elk hunting in Colorado the last two years. It's been phenomenal. Been a great time. Drew had a tag in New Mexico this year, and you know, not the Gila or anything like that, but a great unit. Trail and I were in there. We actually filmed it. We killed two great bulls, two six points, and um, you know, it was it was fun. So. Yeah. This year, Arizona is going to be that for me. Yeah, I'm well, just going to bring eight, those points. With eight points, if I got you some just, opportunity. Yeah, you've got a ton of opportunity in late rifle hunts in Arizona for yeah. eight elk points. And I've been hunting yeah. them in the rut for the last three years in a row. So yeah. I want to go on a late season elk hunt, and that's what I'm going to use Arizona for. Well, so I try I, not to overthink I, it. And I'm more than willing to come and pack them for you if you if you <laughs> shoot. If you sh- Lorenzo shoots, Randy will pack. How's that? Have <laughs> camera. Perfect. Have cameras. Will travel. <laughs> I love the people. Know I'm so. We might have to I do am, that. I am so partial to those late rifle hunts in Arizona because. The draw odds are so much better. You are hunting the same herd of elk with the same age class. It's just a tougher hunt. Yep. But that's also that's part that, of it. That challenge is yeah. the yeah. the fun part of and it. And you're hunting exactly. More. And that's that's yeah. what I'm in. I, I like the experience of things and and doing new things. I haven't hunted a late season elk hunt in a very long time, and I want to go to Arizona this year. And that's going to be Arizona is going to be my elk hunt this year. Yeah. Uh, I, if I had eight points in Arizona, I wouldn't <laughs> sleep until the draw results came yeah, out. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. <laughs> I've been talking about it for a while out here. So. Uh, no, I'm with you guys. I, I, I'm, I don't i like to acquire big bundles of points. And I'm sure people are saying, well, Randy, you have all these pronghorn points in Utah. But it's it's not that I didn't want to burn them. It's just a function for me. It was a function of calendar. Yep. And, and you were drawing other tags. Right. So those are the ones that took the back seat because there is that opportunity out yeah. there when you start to structure it the right way. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about the strategy. And I, I kind of like hunting in some respects. I've been doing these out of state applications for 24, 25 years now. I take for granted that everybody has spent. Life, not a lot, not lifetimes, but so thousands of hours reading and researching and studying and contemplating, and not everybody has, and that's where mm-hmm. the your service brings it all to one place. I, is there anyone out there that's even close to having a website with even remotely close to all of the the data draw odds? Uh, I mean, you guys take every unit in every one of these states you cover and give a full... Full on details. How, I mean. how, how, how many... Were you guys working on it for like three years before you turned the lights on? Yeah. Just to, to, to get everything ready? Yeah. Re- oh, really? it, yeah. That's wow. not a joke. I mean, okay. it's, been a, it's been... Yeah, it's been a grind of putting this thing together. Yeah. But like like I was saying before, that's the beauty of data sets and information. Yeah. Like once you can put them together and package them, they can tell a story. And that's that's why you know data sets are so important. That's why accountants like them to <laughs> see what money's doing and things like that. And that's why hunters like them too is it shows you what's producing and what's not. I mean, hunting in a lot of ways if you look at western hunting, it's a lot like the stock market. Some yeah. things are up, some things are down. Yeah, right. Some places are issuing more shares. Some places are cutting back on shares. Very similar. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we just kind of took that theory of watching the, these data sets and bringing them to life. Yeah. And uh, accurate information is invaluable. Inaccurate information is worthless. It's kind worthless. Of like, <laughs> kind of like using your analogy as stock market. It's worthless. Yes. Yeah, it really is. A good way to make bad decisions is to have bad information. Yeah. Oh man. The old play stupid it games, is. win stupid trophies, use bad and inf- bad information, <laughs> have bad results. Exactly. It's but, pretty simple. So what? What other? Is there any other thing before you guys run me out of here? I've kept these guys from their dinner. No. I've, uh, no. I've we kept enjoy Brady. this way I, more I, than dinner. I've kept Brady from getting uh, the next strategy application article proofread. And I mean, my best work comes later at night. So. <laughs> We have the, the hunting blues juices. right now, too. It's over. So we need something to keep our attention. You, know? you have what blues? Our hunting blues. Oh, they just kicked in. Now it's back to work. Yeah, you I know. know. You guys. New application season. You, if I, being a CPA, I kind of had this really busy schedule in the springtime when there wasn't that much hunting going on. So it was a good time to get my work done. Yeah. And uh, so you guys are a little bit in that same thing. But 
Before we, we wrap up, I just uh, want to thank you guys for what you're offering our, uh, our listeners for using that promo code, Randy. Uh, that I've went and done the tour. We did the YouTube video, a <laughs> tour of the gear shop here. And uh, to give everybody a $50 kind of, for lack of a better term, mad money, cash, mm -hmm. gift certificate, I don't care what you want to call it. Store credit, uh, however yeah, you want yeah. to define it. Just for using our promo code, that's uh, very nice of you guys to do that. And hopefully people start redeeming them and, and buying yeah. gear. And It's been great for us so far. I mean, people are finding massive value in that, obviously. I mean, everybody likes free stuff, you know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gear. <laughs> yeah the, the, the best stuff out there is the free stuff, right? Exactly. Yeah. And that's our, you know, that's our way to to show our members we we care really you know if somebody's willing to give us their money we're willing to give them back as much as we possibly can whether it be in information through the site gear in the store you know customer customer service whatever it is we try to make sure everyone's happy yeah. for sure well i really appreciate all you guys have done i uh, and so does my wife probably because you, make, <laughs> you guys save me so <laughs> much time I, and i understand that not everybody applies and tries to get 12 to 14 tags a year yeah. like i do but even uh, back in the day when i was hoping hey if i get two hunts a year i'm going to be pretty excited that was important time to me that was when i was running a cpa firm i had huge constraints on my time from my son being young coaching his football team all, all this stuff i didn't want to be wasting points wasting yeah. money and burning valuable vacation or time away from home uh, and that's why i had file cabinets full of, of <laughs> articles and <laughs> notes scratched here now there it is right on my yeah. computer so i i really i i remember when i ran into you guys at the first trade show you guys were doing and i walked over and i looked at it and i'm like this can't be this is too much this is bs this 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 is and uh, I, I talked to Chris. Chris came yeah. up to me, and he, he didn't. <laughs> he's like, "Who are you?" I'm like, I don't know. I'm just <laughs> like, and so I'm like, I just apply in a lot of states, and I, I really asked all kinds of questions. And I went home and I signed up. I'm like, I gotta see if this is for real. It's it was worth the money just to see if it was for real. Yeah. And I'm like, all right. So then the next time I, I was in Vegas, I made a special point to call you guys. Can I come and talk to you guys? I, I, I got some questions. And <laughs> as they say, from that point, the, the rest is history. That was like, I don't know. Through, when did you guys start? So inception of the idea was late 2013. We launched the product basically January 1st of 2015. Okay. So we're, yeah. I mean, we're. Three years into it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, not a ton. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it was in early 15 when I, I was down here for SHOT Show, actually. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, yeah I, that's what, that is what it was. Yeah, and I came over and you guys were very tolerant of all my inquiries <laughs> and all my questions. <laughs> I, it's so funny. I'm kind of holding all these questions close to my vest because I'm like, well, they aren't going to figure this out. This is a little secret I learned in 2004. <laughs> you guys already, you're like, Randy, you can put your cards down here. You know, we, we, we've been doing this for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's kind of the way it goes. Uh, so what's your hunt of the year, Brady? What, what, what's 2018? Uh, if, if, if the, uh, you were king for the day, and you got to plan out a hunt. Which one would would reach the top of the pile? Let I me bet get, it doesn't have to do with mule deer. I, I was going to say, I <laughs> bet you any money it's mule deer and probably with a bow. But. Should I mainly le leak the cat out of the bag of what my hunt might be that we are talking about last week? Oh, uh, it's well, going to be. It's going to well, be? Yeah, well, go we, we don't, we, right, we don't right. want to mess anything up here. No, don't no this that. is sure. actually, this is good. We need to start marketing this now. So, yeah. So, so normally people can be, have a good laugh. It'd be Colorado, you know, mule deer. Yeah. It'd be, you know, I have a great Utah tag still. From you there, but uh, I have points in Wyoming for elk. Yeah, and I'm gonna burn them this year. Really? Never, you're never, you're, never. you're gonna degrade yourself to the point of <laughs> chasing elk with a bow? I'm gonna chase, chase a big elk with a bow. Yeah, never kill the bull. We're forcing him. Wow. Literally, and we're gonna market it. I mean, it's Brady yeah. Miller. The guy. The guy is. Well, yeah. around here we he's a mountain athlete. He's like right. Superman in the backcountry. It's an yeah. incredible thing to watch. Yeah. He's unbelievably capable with a bow. 
but he's never been elk hunting in the rut because he loves mule deer so much, which yeah. is awesome. There's nothing wrong with that, but we found it this year. It would just be way too entertaining <laughs> to yeah. force him, literally <laughs> force him to it go. Was it last week? like, how many points do you have, Brady? I was like, well, who wants to know? I mean, I got some points. <laughs> I've secretly been building elk points for and a long gonna time. We're going to film it, and it's going to be awesome. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be my little elk adventure. So really? we're gonna, We are forcing him into an archery rut elk hunt. Uh-oh. So it'll be an experience. It'll probably be a very entertaining and probably get a lot of laughs on it. I'll probably mess up a lot, but hey. It's a big target, so I'm looking forward to getting close to an elk. I'm, I'm taking and putting myself in the in the seat of the audience driving down listening to the podcast right now. What the hell? Yeah, Brady you gotta Miller? force the guy to go archery elk hunting? I know. Most people play jumping at the, right. like, at the Honestly, bed. We laughed about it in the office. Chris and I were like, him and I were just kind of in there putting our, our seasons together because, you know, all... We laugh about it, but I mean, we work year round. I mean, it absolutely comes first. But yeah. I mean, we all joke about, well, it's hunting season now, so we'll, you know, whatever. Yeah. So we were, anyways, we were in the office planning it, and we both kind of gave each other that look like, should we just force him to do this? Because <laughs> it would, I mean, it's got to be entertaining, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be. Okay, let's do it. Called him in there, asked him how many points he had, and say, all right. <laughs> You're going on an elk hunt. Oh god! So Why don't have a choice. Here we go. So is that? But okay, you you say you're being for, or Lorenzo says they're forcing you to do it. So whether you're forced to do it or of your own pleasure, is that the one you're you're really looking? For I'm really to? actually looking forward to that one. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I also have a you know Colorado. I'm trying to plan with my brother. My brother, I was taking him to Montana every year for a family hunt, and we take you know average Montana bucks. Yeah. but he's never taken a giant buck. Right. So I'm hoping giving him full on Colorado. I'll shoot last day if I need to, but yeah. I'm hoping to draw you know one of those still tags again that takes very few points. Just like I want to go every year and hunt. Right. So we're trying a good opportunity there. But yeah. yeah. Is he an archery hunter like you? Or is he no, a he's hunter? he's a rifle guy. Yeah, he's, okay. he's too busy with work to dive into all that stuff. But. Yeah. Huh. So I mean, yeah, Wyoming elk is going to be my number one focus kind of for a little while because that's going to come up before. It's cool to see him come around to it. He yeah. is getting yeah. excited about. Well, at first it. he kind of huh. joked and said it was going to be an all year elk thing. I had to give up mule there for a full year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was, I, he didn't think that was so funny. No. We told him there was no elk hunts or no, <laughs> no deer, deer hunts. hunts. It was only elk hunts <laughs> yeah. in 2018. Uh, well, we know Lorenzo's. I've been for the last hour and a half has been talking about his uh, Arizona late rifle yeah, elk. I'm hunt, excited so. about that. So I don't know. I think this year my exciting hunt is probably, well, hey, the one that prob- the audience is going to say, how did you end up with that many points, Newberg? Uh, I'm going to burn my Utah pronghorn hunts finally, or points finally. Uh, the only downside awesome. is Utah has their pronghorn season September 12th through the 17th. It's like prime elk well you're out calling elk brady i'm gonna be chasing pronghorn with a rifle <laughs> but it's just like this big bundle of points every time i look at how many points i have i'm like newberg you're so stupid how did you get that many points <laughs> yep. so it's almost like guilt and embarrassment that i'm wanting to cleanse just my, get rid of it yeah but it it's gonna be a ton of fun i mean when you wait that long of course it is i'm i'm hoping that it's not absolute terrible drought and you know that's plays into if if the utah applications come in and i'm like oh man they still don't have any moisture i might punt and buy another point and, mm-hmm. and wait there's nothing but, wrong with that so, i mean when you have that many you do want to get rid of them like you said out of almost embarrassment it, embarrassment thinking you have 22 antelope points yeah. but you still want to do it on the right year right you know yeah so i'd say that's probably my big big hunt this year other than you guys told me i'm going to draw that missouri breaks yeah uh, for sure right <laughs> yeah. if i if i get that take that you, one to the bank you know yeah if i get that tag i don't care who wants to come with every listener can by come the way with if, if you do want. draw that tag and you know how hard we're going to market this conversation right here <laughs> <laughs> if you well, do draw you, it this conversation is going to be everywhere all right if i draw it you have Unlimited license and exclusive use of this <laughs> conversation, Lorenzo. Done. <laughs> if that's what everywhere. it would take to get me this tag. In fact, if I shoot a ram, I'll give you the images. You can have some sort of selfie-looking uh, image <laughs> on there. Like, I'll be have this crazy grin and with pointing the, you know, go hunt right here. <laughs> I already told you I was going to be on the hunt with you, so I'll take some photos. Yeah, so okay, you take, take the images. Yep. Lorenzo is in charge of, like, the tagline, the, yeah. the hashtag. And 
we'll we'll call it. Yeah. Honestly, though, this is why I love this time of year. It's fun yeah. to think about what could happen. It could happen. Yeah. It's very fun to think about that. Yeah, it, it is. I I spend way too much time thinking about what could happen. 2013. But. I was applying for El, or for for desert sheep in New Mexico. Yeah. When you hit the be. when you hit the Maybe purchase button, be. did did it? I mean, oh, I you, mean, it didn't necessarily register. It's kind of for me. It's always a couple weeks after I apply. Yeah. And you think back about it, man. Good. What happen. if I? What if I drew? <laughs> like, it's gonna be crazy if I actually did draw that. Uh, yeah. Well, I I may have told you my story of uh, when I drew that Unit Ten early rifle ta- elk tag in Arizona. I'd already drawn in Nevada, mm-hmm. and that was back when Arizona's elk draw was in June, like the deer and sheep is. So I call my buddy Jerry. I'm like Jerry. If I end up with two elk tags this year, my wife is going to kill me. <laughs> and he's like, don't worry. Just apply for Unit 10 early elk. You'll never draw that. You only got like seven points. Oh, whew, good. And that was before Arizona let you buy a point. Uh, so you had to apply. Yeah, you had yeah. to apply. So yeah. I put that in as my first choice. I can't remember. I put some other. He gave me some other. Did ridiculous. it ever hit you like midway through before the the results came out that you might possibly could have drew it. i didn't i i had Nothing. zero none not even the slightest see sometimes i live in a fantasy world where i'm like yeah. maybe i did draw it <laughs> well what i still remember somebody said hey you can call uh, uh, arizona you used to be able to call this number and put in your uh, your you know okay here's my i don't know if it was hunter id or social security whatever and it said congratulations, you have drawn hunt number, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, don't tell me I put a cow tag in or something. So yeah, I oh, ran it. Yeah. Yeah. That ran used it. to happen quite a bit. Yeah, I got the, because back then they'd mail you a paper regulation. Mm-hmm. And I run and I look at the hunt code. I'm like, no way. No <laughs> way. That's exactly what I said. You got to be blanking me. <laughs> And so I ran downstairs, and, and this, uh, before I knew what a cell phone was, I dial it again, go through the whole thing, and I write down the hunt code again, confirm it, and I look it up. And I was still was not going to believe it. Tag shows up in the mail. I had like tag 26 out of 40 or something. Oh, I am like, you wow. are kidding me. <laughs> so, For me, with my, uh, with my desert sheep tag, you – Obviously, no very well, but New Mexico, your tag is printer paper. Yeah. You literally print right. it out, and there's a QR code. Yeah. So, like, I was leaving on the hunt, and I'm going, is this a real, like, do <laughs> I actually really have this tag? Because this is, it's printer paper. And I'm, supposedly, I'm allowed to go shoot a desert sheep. Yeah. Like, how is this even possible? I'm sitting here with a piece of printer paper folded in my pocket. <laughs> like it, re- it was still not registering all the way, even when I was going out there to scout. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> well, guys, thanks so much for your time. Is there anything that we've missed or that we got to cover? Or? <sighs> no. Uh, I mean, as far as Go Hunt goes, last year we spent a lot of time and effort into our curated gear shop. Right. Um, we really wanted to, to give another avenue of um, knowledge, another avenue of be, of hunters being able to get their hands on great gear, yeah. you know, for the lack of a better term, best price around because of our rewards program, our loyalty program back for our members. Uh, and we wanted to do a good job on that. So that took a lot of the year last year. Yeah. This year, it's 100% insider focused. Yeah. We are, we've launched female odds for all species already. Um, bears launched other than Utah, but it will be live um, in due time for application. And then two states are coming, California, Kansas yeah. are coming this year. And then <laughs> don't want to quite peel the book back all sure. the way, but there are some other very, very big enhancements coming down cool. um, that don't necessarily have to do with states or applications. It's just kind of a different world in its own. Yeah. But it's it's being built out right now. Hopefully mid-year, that's, that's when that goes. Cool. Exciting times. So oh, it's man. uh we're we are very insider just, just more application art strategy articles Brady's got it right. Uh, yeah. Here's the thing: the more states we launch, uh-huh. more insider application articles he has to do. <laughs> so that's two more this year. Uh, do you get time to play any basketball with all this? I mean, I had a game last night. He still great. plays we, plenty of basketball. We won, okay. so okay. That, was, that was good. Which I, I don't I don't quite agree with. Uh, I did cut back my Wednesday night team. I'm only playing Monday nights now. So uh, we're hunting only. 
You can't yeah. be having people out right. to doing yeah. activity what, sports. What, what are what are you going to do if you blow you know, out like, an ankle or a knee you playing know, like basketball? The and professional you've... athletes have to sign contracts. Right. No motorcycles. No, no skiing, skiing. No, no this. Yeah. I feel like we got to do that for Brady. Yeah, I'm gonna lock you out. How are we gonna film this first ever elk hunt? Right, if he's got an ACL <laughs> brace yeah. on, yeah. Just he doesn't work. Legs in the mountains, not in the court, huh? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Well, I tell my camera crew they do create. I mean, like Marcus, that guy. He he's already torn one ACL. He's a backcountry skier. I'm like, dude, your body is your tool for this job. Got to be healthy. You better not be laid up because yeah. I. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I will say I have cut back on skiing, so that's good. Yeah. That's good news. Yeah, why yeah, any hunter so. would ski is beyond me. I would no not way. risk my hunting opportunities to go let gravity take me down a cold hill. I'm a bit of a bubble boy almost. Like, me too. unless it's <laughs> me hunting, too, I'm like, no way I'm, I'm doing that. Yeah. Are you kidding me? What if he gets in the way of my hunting? I know. I am. I actually even use it when my wife wants us to decorate the house for Christmas. I'm like, <laughs> what if I fall off the pitch of that roof? How am I going to do this? TV show. Yeah. She's like, you're getting out of hand, buddy. I'm like, no, I'll call someone to do it, but I'm not doing it. I yeah. am like the ultimate bubble boy when it comes to not messing up my... Yeah, if it's before a hunt that I'm looking forward to, getting yeah. sick, getting hurt, like I literally will just lay on my couch <laughs> like hospital bed style and make sure I'm perfectly fine by the time I leave. All right, I guess I got to consider quitting basketball now. Uh, we, that was a good speech. Sorry, Brady. <laughs> Did, didn't mean, I mean to I, shut I, you I, down. Yeah, I'd rather hunt than play basketball it's yeah, it's not lie. So, uh, well, folks, we really appreciate you guys listening, gals listening. I hope that you got some uh, information and strategy ideas out of this. And you know, we've only run here for an hour and a half, but it's—I don't think we barely even lifted no. the first layer off. It. The We're within an inch of the pond, and the pond is a hundred feet deep. There you go, and and they're just no other place that i know of it's uh, it is at your fingertips if you go to the go hunt insider yeah. and for the last time go hunt.com use promo code randy and draw your tag and then tell us big stories about how great of a hunt you had exactly and uh, and to put it put it in perspective a little bit i genuinely think we could have three to four hour podcasts on, on every each state, state right on, on each, each state. species yep. almost oh, yeah. right i think you could and i don't know maybe that's what we'll have to do next year we'll just have to get together and do three or four but then we don't want to uh, we don't want to spill the beans dude that's yeah, that's exactly. the other thing yeah i mean you got you, you guys got to stay in business we want somehow. the fair playing field like hey, that's what go. we care about go. is that fair playing field because, yeah. you know, a guy like you, you're going to put in the research. So I don't want right. to take away from your I, hours of research. I, and, I know. If, if we know. just did a three-hour, two-hour podcast just on Arizona, you'd see me squirming over here <laughs> yeah. because you guys would start laying down some cars. I'd be like, like no, oh, no, 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 shut up, one. shut beep, boop, boop, <laughs> boop. I, I'd, you'd hear a blank <laughs> part in the, in the podcast where I edited <laughs> you out. And probably the same with Wyoming and Nevada. <laughs> yeah. But anyhow, folks, thanks, guys. Lorenzo, Thank you. Brady, thanks, thanks so here. much. I appreciate it. Folks, thanks for listening. Until the next time, good luck out there. 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 Good luck out there.